What we're going to demonstrate here today is how to do a proper damage investigation. Uh, a lot of times we get the uh, photos and the damage investigation from the facility owners, but we don't get a lot from the excavator or the average homeowner. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine whether we're going to determine whether this thing is within tolerance or not. Which in Illinois, 18 inches is the tolerance zone. These sticks, you can get these at Menards or any probably home home supply store. You want to put this stick in the area where the facility is, and obviously you can see that the mark is orange, so you're going to go to the edge of the mark. Now, if you don't have these fancy white boards like the uh, facility owners, you can use something like just a regular uh, measuring tape. Now, when you're taking photographs of a damaged site, what you want to do is survey the area, take pictures of the marks leading up to and away from the damaged area. Uh, and in this case, we're using a tape measure and a stick. And what you want to do is make sure you get the proper angle. You take the picture down. Make sure you get it where we can actually read the numbers. And if there is any, you know, if this mark was really, really, really faint and you couldn't tell if that was a mark, you'd want to get a really close up shot of the mark like that. You want to come back here and you want to take pictures leading up to in line with the damage so that we have some sort of reference point in the back and then you want to take pictures coming back from the other direction. One thing we'd like to stipulate is that you make sure you, you take your pictures, make sure you're doing it straight on. Yeah, make sure good. make sure it's straight on top of it, not at it, not at an angle, because it can become deceptive on the on the uh, distance, especially when it gets close to that 18 inch 18 inch mark. So you want to make sure that you make keep your picture straight on, back and forth, all the way up to it, and then from the other side up. Make sure you're doing it straight. If there was no mark there at all, what we're going to do is we're gonna utilize the two closest marks to the actual damage location. And what we're gonna use for that is we're gonna use this handy dandy string line. You can buy these at any home center. Take that and go tie it onto that thing there and we'll pull it to the next one. Now you're nice and straight. So a lot of times the excavation area will not have any marks left because uh, the excavator has removed all the marks. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to go from the closest possible mark to the damage location, pull a string line tight. And you don't want any, you don't want any obstacles on the string so that it provides an approximate location. So the way we've got it set up right here, this represents the marks when we've got that one and that one, and that's all we have left. This represents where the utility is by looking down in the hole. So it's pretty obvious that we're, if these were the only two marks that we had left, this would be pretty obvious that it's within the 18 inch tolerance zone. Another thing we'd like to do is as Carl's doing, we're circling the, the paint marks. That way you can show where they were just in case the utility comes out and locates in between you completing this, your damage investigation. And that'll make sure that it'll help you determine fault and if you're within tolerance. Yeah, these white, the white paint, the string, the sticks, everything will help with the photography. Because if you just took pictures of the ground, a lot of times you'll miss what's the paint of it. You know, the, the circle actually makes the paint stand out, the white paint does. And when you're in the winter time, when it's snowy, or if you're in white gravel, obviously you'd use black paint, it helps the paint stand out. Now, if it was a really complex area where this was a very large trench and we couldn't determine we had a mark way back there and a mark way back here, and then we'd use something like this to show, you know, where this thing is. You want to hold that down there, and then obviously the plum bob will be plum, and then you could measure over. The plum bob represents a perfectly straight up and down line. But what the facility owners will do is they'll arrive on site, they'll circle any marks that are left remaining on the site, so they would circle all the marks that way and all the marks that way. They would 
rehook up to this facility and verify that the marks were accurate or not. And if, so to speak, they hooked up and they, they were verifying the marks and they got their marks here, they would paint it out like this. You know, let's say we were getting our tone here and see you've got, let's say we've got some, we've got some paint in the grass right there. I would circle that. So let's say the facility owner was verifying these white marks and this is where they actually got tone on the facility was right there. Now we've got, we've got this is our facility. This is the remaining marks that we have. And this is where, this is where we're, we're getting our, our accurate tone. Then we would put our board here like so, right to the edge, or, or you do it this way. And now you can see that we're questionable. These just few little things that you can do to um, do a dam's investigation on your own will cover your assets, so to speak, and it'll also help us with our investigation. So these are just a few of the tips.